Well, hello everyone. This is uh, Writing on Air, and thanks for tuning in. Uh, thanks for that intro too, Kylie. Before we begin, I wanted to say if anyone wants to submit and be part of the show, they can do so at write.onair at gmail.com. That's W-R-I-T-E dot onair at gmail.com. Yes, and that wonderful voice you just heard is my co-host, Kylene. And uh, I believe she actually has a pretty extensive background in this whole writing genre thing that we have going. (laughs) I guess you could call it that. Um, I actually am working on my second master's. I graduate next week. I'm very excited. Uh, That master's is in creative writing. My first master's is in secondary English education. So I can teach both high school and college now. I'm very excited. (laughs) So, and yeah, I know a little bit. Creative writing is absolutely my favorite. Um, So this is a pleasure. I get to come here and... Uh, read some work that yeah. people submit. So I'm pretty excited about today. Putting into practice on air. I works. am, yeah. So please, if you can submit your stuff that we can uh, have a nice, really cool discussion on. And it's a pleasure for me. So please uh, me too. submit. Yeah. So we'll get right into it. Uh, we have a couple pieces today. Um, this first piece is by one of my friends who has submitted before. His name is Brandon Melrose. And uh, he didn't put anything tagged to it, but the title is uh, The Dark. So it should be a pretty interesting one. Have you ever wondered why people are scared of the dark? Why young, inquisitive children cry and fear? Young children don't fear what they don't understand. They are curious to a fault and will happily explore anything and everything around them to state their deep-seated hunger to understand the world around them. So, why do children cringe at the night and shy away from the shadows? More importantly, why did you forget what you saw there? I will tell you what lies in the shadows, and you will make your choice yet again. Will you choose to remember, or will you continue to fear the darkness around you without knowing why? When you were a child, you will have seen it. It is the first and the only time you will have been able to. The door. A simple wooden door that is unlike any other you have ever seen. It is carved from what looks to be wood, but you can't quite say for sure, and painted in a gray cracking paint that will not flake. It will have seen, it will have been left ajar for you to find and ponder, like all children, what could be on the other side. There is, there is a darkness that cannot be described upon the other side. It swallows you as you enter and pulls you into the space beyond. You will know that you moved, but how you moved and where you went will be a mystery. However, you will find yourself in the center of a dimly lit circular gray room. The light is almost hazy and lacks sharpness of color. A figure that you cannot clearly define will be sitting at a large desk raised upon a dais. It will not give its name or speak at all, but will wave its hand and the light will flare into a white brilliance. Here you will see what it has to show you. What you saw, I don't know, because it showed you the end, your end. Why it calls the children to show them this, I don't know. But it then gives you a choice in the form of two doors. They are identical in every way, except for what is written there. It is not written in any language I know, but you will know its meaning all the same. The twin doors will read, Remember and Forget. You and so many others chose to forget. You feared the knowledge of the future, and that fear still exists today. Ever catch yourself checking over your shoulder on a dark night, jumping at a sound in the night, or maybe just having an unprompted sense of relief at the sight of a street light on a dark road? The fear of the future lurks around every corner and in every shadow. So what will you choose this time? Don't turn from the page, don't look up. But just out of the corner of your eye, you might see the door. Care to have a look at what lies in the shadows one more time? That was The Dark by Brandon Melrose. (laughs) That was great. Um, A nice meditation. Uh, This wasn't usually uh, Josh does, uh, I believe. Oh, I'm sorry. This is. (laughs) <laughs> uh, what is it, the name again? This is Brandon. Oh, Brandon, thank mm-hmm. you. Sorry, we, sometimes we have uh, multiple submissions. So please, again, send as many as you'd like. We use as many as we can. Yes. Um, I believe normally uh, this particular author writes poems. 
And this one is actually more of a prose meditation piece. I keep using the word meditation mm. because I don't know how else to explain these short pieces that are very delved into something deep. So which I wanted to get into, yeah. could you tell me what you feel the meaning of the doors or what you feel the Oof. doors mean? Oh boy. I know because I'm listening going, <laughs> I don't know what to say. Well, he says the twin doors will read, remember and forget. It's almost like um, there's that there's that theory that's gone on, and this could be touching on it. That when we're born, we know everything, and then as we as we like as an infant, we don't have the way to articulate it, but we know the entire world. So there's a theory behind that. There's a school of thought that kind of puts that out there, and this is I think touching on that. Where as a child, this thing, this this future, this this feeling, energy, whatever you want to call it, calls out to these children and shows them the rest of their future, how they'll end, what, it, what that is. And they actively choose to forget, which could then you could, you could push forward to how we kind of don't want to know what our future is, but we also do really want to know. But given the choice, we are choosing to forget in here. So these doors are essentially maybe like finality, um, not necessarily death, but knowledge, I would say. And one of them chooses to take that away, and one of them chooses to accept it, really. Um, so the remember one, obviously you remember what's going on. Um, and he doesn't talk about anyone that does choose to remember. He just kind of prompts the think about your future. Have you chosen to forget again? What will you look at it again? Will you look at your future again? Uh, because most of us choose to forget, which is an interesting little theory. So those doors to me, I think are an opening or closing of knowledge for the future. Um, this is actually very perfect for it being graduation week oh, next yeah. week. And I feel like I've got, you know, that fear right now. Um, and I hate to say fear. That's not really it. I feel like Chica State did a great job in prepping me for a uh, future. But there is that, you know, which door, you know, what's behind it. We don't know certain things. And even though we're told, you got this. I don't know. I thought this was really great because a lot of times, you know, our lives are based on fear. Mm. Um, every, a lot of decisions, majority of people make is based on fear, fear of losing a job, fear of not doing this or fear of something. So this was really well done. Um, the one thing I like about this is, so again, I always push against a lot of things that are abstract. Mm. I like concrete, you know, imagery and stuff. So this actually included some of that, the doors, I know what a door is, um, the door being cracked, uh, you know, the painted, uh, just, it, I actually had something to hold on to. We have a gray cracking paint that will not flake. That's kind of eerie because for me, usually if it's cracking, it's flaking or I want to pick at it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it was really cool about the imagery here. And they use the word gray, you know, um, there's a lot in, in using, when you use certain colors, when you describe things, there's usually a lot of intention with it. Um, this particular author, that use of gray is kind of brilliant. Mm. You could say white, you could say red, you could say all these different colors, but gray is literally neutral. <laughs> it's so neutral. Yeah. And what's kind of wild is that I, I want to ask this author why they decided that the, the paint will not flake. It will have been left ajar for you to find and ponder. But you can't quite say for sure. Oh, sorry. That's Unlike any other better. you've ever seen, uh, it is carved from what looks to be wood, but you can't quite say for sure, and painted in a gray, cracking paint that will not flake. Yeah, so that's, I don't know. I don't know why it's not flaking. Maybe it's, I don't know. There's so many questions I yeah. have, but this is what I love about imagery. There's intention when you do that. When you say something so specific, like a color, that it is flaking but not, or I'm sorry, that it's cracking but not flaking, there's an intention in there. And I would have to really sit and contemplate yeah. that for a while. Um, but that's what I love about this work. There was a reason for that. And I, I don't know what it would be for this particular piece. But maybe it's the idea that there's, you know, you can crack and age and go through all this. But that doesn't mean you're falling apart. Yeah. It's just showing you that, you know, there's it, time. Yes. I, I guess that's what it would be. To me, it represents time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, that's perfect. And it, almost like a permanence, too. Because it's not degrading. It's just, it's just showing age. Yeah. Essentially. And I... I like to, to interrupt you yeah, real quick. Um, there is no strong feeling of a positive or negative in this. Exactly that gray. So that, that gray feeling and all stuff like that, there is no negative or positive tied to remembering or forgetting. It's just, what do you choose this time? 
And like even because uh, you you would you had said that there's things that we want to forget about or like uh, all this fear going around like trying to find things and trying to get jobs and stuff like that. Sometimes it's even the fear of knowing what you're going to be doing. Ooh. So like when you when you feel like you've gotten a career, you've got something like that, and you look at it and you can see all the way to the end. Yeah. Sometimes that's even more terrifying or or just as terrifying as the other stuff. So yeah, yeah. that that actually brings this like last few lines. Don't turn from the page. Don't look up. But just out of the corner of your eye, you might see the door. Mm-hmm. Care to have a look at what lies in the shadows one more time. And I imagine, like, especially like working on papers and as being a writer, you know, for in magazines, I always have to focus. That to me reminds me of the idea of focus on what you're doing right now. The yeah. door will be there. The thing will be there. Um, you know, where you need to go will always be there, but just focus on the thing you need to get done. Yeah. And that I thought was just a, without saying it, he said it. And I thought that was really, you know, the author said that in a really great way. Yeah. It's like again, that corner you. of your eye, you know, it'll always be there. You don't have to worry. Just do what you have to do. And that gave me a sense of hope. Yeah. yeah, <laughs> yeah. Even though quote unquote, I feel in as the poem states the dark. Yeah. <laughs> it's totally it. Yeah. No, this is a great piece. I, like I, like you said, I think we could talk for many hours on this, which I think we said about every piece because every piece we get is <laughs> it's really in depth. I know I literally took four words, you know, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> cracking paint, but will not flake. I could talk about the meaning of that for yeah. We'll invite him on the show and he'll be like, you totally missed it. That's not exactly what I was going for at all. Well, you know what? That's okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's why we, we're readers, not writers. Right? Yes, that's true. <laughs> well, okay. So let's keep going because uh, otherwise we'll end up staying on this for much too long. So thank you, for uh, Brandon, for submitting. Thank you, Brandon. And this next one, uh, I'll, I'll say, yeah, is actually do. submitted by a girl named Hannah. Um, she did not put uh, her last name in there, so just Hannah is her name. Um, and I believe they don't have any titles to them either. I don't see any titles on these. But I will say uh, I went over them with her a little bit, and I kind of pulled out some like heaven and hell themes. So we're kind of in that direction a little bit, uh, but we, there's no title for it. So kind of read when you listen, uh, kind of have those in the back of your mind. People swarm around her. She felt as if she were an opside. Hundreds of beating hearts, breathing lungs, brains at work. Yet she stands there watching the world blur around her, feeling utterly alone. Lost in her own body, prisoner to her own mind, she watches others with the sickness she can't feel as if it were a living organism. The blackness dances around her, acting as a constrictor, wrapping itself around her, keeping her still. The crowd ceases to register her appearance. Her heart beats faster as both her physical and mental prisons begin to rapidly shrink. The slithering snake slowly closes on her heart, whispering sins into her receptive ears. She opens her eyes. The crowd's gone. All that's left is the eerie quiet. Inhale sin. Exhale innocence. She raises her head towards the heavens. The ground falls out from under her. The oily tentacles of sin right in excitement they won exhale innocence oh that was a good piece (laughs) that was really good yeah wow there's some okay can i just i know we'll talk about the meaning of it there's this (laughs) one part in reading felt really good in my mouth Mm. the slithering snake slowly closes like i hate usually saying (laughs) s's but i love saying that (laughs) oh man is that that's called like onomatopoeia or something like that uh uh onomatopoeias are the sounds sorry sounds right so like if i were to like uh, remember the old batman pow bang those are onomatopoeias (laughs) what's uh what's that called then Right, right, um, if it's the beginning, uh, forgive me on this one. I don't starts, have starts with an A. I think. Alliteration. alliteration yeah. Go. So I believe it's a, actually. Oh no, my god! Wait, I can't that's believe that's not this. right either. Oh my goodness. Um, um, 
It's alliteration. I don't. Okay, forgive me. Oh my god, my <laughs> students are rolling in their graves right now. I'm sorry, they're rolling in their graves. Yes, I'm un- I'm unqualified. We'll have to put all the blame on you for this. <laughs> I know. I'm so sorry. I haven't taught creative writing this semester. I have grad brain. No joke. That I is have true. side note. Um, <laughs> someone caught me in the hallway talking to my door in my office, <laughs> and then at a hubcap earlier. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> and they, I had explanations for all of these, but sure, it's sure. like my brain right now is totally not there. Yeah, um, it's the last two weeks of our. Oh, uh, an Afra. Sorry, thank you. That's it. Yes. Um, sorry. Oh my gosh. Okay, <laughs> forgive me, guys. I swear. Yes. I'm I'm qualified. But yes, those words are really fun to say. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so um, and it's those. Uh, the sounds that have very similar sounding rhymes, even though if the ending doesn't like slithering and snake don't have the same end rhyme, uh, but they have the S's in there. Yeah, so yeah. anyway, there's that. And then there's these great moments of exhale innocence. Yeah. And that's, that's said twice. And then inhale sin is one time, but exhale innocence is twice. And I thought that was a really pretty brilliant move um, because it's inhaled sin the first part and then exhale uh, innocence twice after that. So it's like, uh, I don't know if you've ever done like yoga and stuff. You inhale and then you exhale, but then you're exhaling again. Yeah, that was a really cool move right there. Um, I don't know if that was her intention, but that's what it made me think of. So. It would, you know, we talk about meditation for some reason when we have these talks about these works because they are so short and that, that actually kind of enveloped it. Yeah. Anyway. And I love the idea of innocence and sin. If we are, I think the other pieces do have a mention of Lucifer and angels. So yes. this might be kind of thematic, even though she doesn't mean to be. Yes. Oh man. So what could you say? I'm going to ask you what you feel this poem uh, was about. Yeah. Uh, well, people swim around her. She felt as if she were an, um, obstacle in a stampede there's obviously like a disconnect there like something she's not reaching out to there's things in society that she wants um I'm trying it feels to find... like uh this it to me in my head I, I imagine uh this poem being about someone feeling like they are in the way of society in the yes. way of things um and the idea of sin and innocence it's almost like their persona their their innocence is getting in the way of what society requires of them yeah and I could be totally incorrect on that one. I apologize, Hannah. No, it's, but it, that's it my feel right. on this. Yeah, um, man, there was a line in here. Because think of okay, so snake. What do we think of when we think of snakes? We instantly usually think if we're you know, the Bible, Genesis. Yep. We're talking about uh, the, the devil. Yeah, right. Yeah. So Lucifer is coming in, uh, squeezing this 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 character, um, almost taking the life out of. It. Is that not what sin does? You know, takes the life and. Uh, I feel like there is a struggle with being uh, innocent in a life full of sin. Yeah. And how do you get through that? Mm. And again, it brings us back to that slithering snake slowly (laughs) closes on her heart. And it's almost like this character wants to appreciate, uh, uh, wants to appreciate the fact that they are innocent, but has to struggle with the fact that sin is just the way to live. And it's almost like, oh, I want to be a good person, but how can I when sin comes in so easy and and painfully? Yeah, and it says the the last line here, the oily tentacles of sin, right in excitement. They won, period. I realize, is it right or... uh, Oh. I I know, I'm so sorry. It's handwritten, so it's hard for me to read. Uh, 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 Writhe, I think you're right. Thank you, sorry. I'm going to correct myself on that. (laughs) (laughs) This was a handwritten piece, so I I was not reading that correctly. Mm -hmm. Uh, But she says, they won exhale innocence it's almost like an acceptance like well it's there i recognize it but i think i can still be okay around this like i'm just gonna kind of exhale it it's moved on and i've breathed it out essentially just realized Mm. you're inhaling the sin and you're exhaling the innocence it's almost like now inside is this sin let go of that innocence Ooh. Oh, I just oh, got that's that. A great right? Yeah. yeah. So I it's almost like, saying. yeah. So it, they just let their innocence go. Oh. Dang. Oh, I almost took this to another level of what the snake actually represents. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I know, right? Right, right, right. Very <laughs> wow. interesting. Wow. Whoa, this levels. <laughs> oh, man. See, it, I didn't even think about that. That's great. Go ahead. Right? Well, usually because when, when we get to certain abstractness, again, with poems, this is why I push against abstractness. Sometimes we read too much into it. But this actually with that that solid image of that snake and what that represents, all I imagine now is losing your innocence. That's oh. beautiful. Opens her eyes. Yeah. Right. Wow. Boom. Yeah, sometimes little <laughs> little things like that in these pieces really kind of change the entire context of it. Right. Um, and yeah, this like I said, we read these uh, these pieces pretty pretty cold. We we do some small skimming over beforehand, but we want to have the kind of same reactions you guys are having. So 
if we have, if it seems like we're stumbling into this, it's because we are, that's, <laughs> that's the whole point. I think that's where creativity really kind of pops out. Yeah. Um, man, this is such a good piece. Yeah. yeah. I don't know what else to say on it. That was, <laughs> that was perfect. That was and like a nice And then we exhale concise. our innocence right. into the next piece. Right. Yes. So the next piece also by Hannah. Yes. Um, this one is also entitled, but, uh, yeah, it's pretty good. Lucifer rises, eating what's left of my blackened heart. I laugh a, sh- a soul-shattering, chesty laugh as I get consumed by the creatures from hell. A smile upturns my mouth, a stomach-wrenching grin. Demons chuckle and dance as I give into the monster they have created from my sins. My skin crawls with the colors of hell. A fiery fight rages in my heart, as if struggles for my humanity. The demon we have created bursts free and releases an ear-piercing scream, rough with anger from another dimension. Lucifer's dominions hiss and howl at my feet. Hell's fire burns through my veins. Suddenly, with a start, I realize who I've become. Oh, man. (laughs) Oh, man. Can I? There was one here. Yeah, go for it. Chesty laugh as I get consumed by the creatures of hell. The shattering chesty laugh. That right there, like, when I think of imagery or, like, sensory stuff, I imagine laughing, you know, in your chest. That's a really good, like, there's some really good descriptions in there that I enjoy. Again, it's very abstract to me overall love that i just get it that's good yeah no and the, the that that part too i laugh a soul shattering chesty laugh to me um because the next the next the end of that sentence is as i get consumed by the creatures from hell yeah. which usually you wouldn't be laughing at that i'd imagine so it's almost like this insanity this confusion this chaos yes. that's going on and then at the end uh she realizes or the the person in this piece says suddenly with a start i realize who i've become Mm -hmm. she's become one of those demons one of those things in that lucifer controls or even lucifer himself at that point that's what it feels like to me yeah i really or or also because you can take it a different way too suddenly with a start i've realized who i've become someone who enjoys this or someone who's going into that so maybe not even a creature of health just there's these two different spots what does she become what has she realized there's there's that question at the end there that almost wakes you like wait what's next and but that's it (laughs) Yeah, oh, it's such a good... Great language, yes. if I can say. There's just I'm really weird about words, and the words used in this, I very much enjoy. Like, suddenly, with a start, like, that word start, I was like, oh, that's brilliant. Um, again, chesty laugh. Um, a smile turns up my mouth. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. So. Well, there's a second uh, piece with this that's kind of uh, lumped together in the same category. I think you guys will like it. Come back to me, the love we once shared, the wonder of forever, destroyed by unapologetic raids of anger, contaminated by restless convulsion. Come back to me, the angel heaven, let me think was you. Oh, man. Okay, so that's a really good contrast of the delicacy. Yeah, um, yeah. The other one is that harsh, bitey yeah, type that of thing. Yeah, chaotic. And here, um, I, uh, by the way, I do have to correct myself. Um, mm-hmm. Contaminated by the restless revulsion, come back to me. The angel heaven, let me think, was you. So I don't know. That was cool. We've got these two comparisons. Uh, this, uh, if we were to put these two together, the original, I imagine, being the person feeling as if they are the sin, and yet the other, uh, their love would be the angel. Yeah. Yeah. So we've got them being the sinner, the other person being angelic. It almost seems like there's a progression too. like the first piece is what like the initial battle feeling like this, like this whole um, thing that they're struggling with and they become someone. But then it's almost like come back to me. There's something that's been lost after that. And so they're calling back to that saying the love we once shared, the wonder of forever. Like there's almost a longing to go back to before that soul uh, shattering chesty laugh Mm -hmm. in a sense, which, oh man. Yeah. 
Those are all pretty good. Yeah, I feel like we, we didn't mean to rush into all of them, but, you know, sometimes at the end we do like to kind of do a little uh, put together to see yeah. how they all kind of combine. Yes. Um, I felt those two, uh, both, I, we'll call them heaven and hell. Yeah, Unfortunately yeah. are untitled. We shouldn't <laughs> be titling these things, but for our re- remembrance, we'll, we can do that. Right. <laughs> right. So we apologize to the author on that. We do not mean to change your pieces here. Yeah. Um, so overall, um, I forget that first one we were talking about, um, that darkness, right? Yes, yes. Not knowing, I guess what's going to happen and maybe even who we are. And then we have these other two pieces by Hannah talking about starting to know who we are. Yeah. And being worried about that in a sense. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So we see like that, that entire, that actually is perfect way to encompass it. Yeah. Like look at who you are, question it, maybe consider it. Are you, are you forgetting? Are you trying to remember? And then this next one is almost like grabbing onto it and like seeing kind of like this downfall into something that you're maybe not entirely okay with. But even at the end of the second one, suddenly with a start, I realize who I've become, which is also not positive or negative. Yeah. It could, it's open. Yeah. It doesn't really truly say, I mean, we do have the understanding that there's uh, Lucifer coming, but how do we, who are we to say that what is given to you? You know, yeah. like we have certain personal defects that really aren't that great, but yes. who's not to say those aren't something that maybe with a start, I realize who I am and what I can do with those. Especially because the setting is this horrible place, Yes, but the ending is ambiguous. Yes. It's left open. Like, do you want to take this in one direction or the other? Who have mm-hmm. I become for this? And in the end there, it's that thing that maybe there's something that's been lost in that transition after they've looked at it. So we see like Brandon's is like the setting for this, like, Hey, think about this. And then we see pieces that are thinking about this, <laughs> which, Oh man, that's, that's, ah, I love these pieces so much. Thank you guys for submitting. Yeah. So, um, if you'd like to submit, we would love to hear from you, please. As many pieces as you'd like, yes. um, any kind of details on who you are. Please. Um, you don't have to tell us about what the pieces are. You can just let us kind of get, I hate to say guess, but you know, yeah. infer or analyze based on what we see. Yes. Um, and if you'd like to, please uh, send us to write.onair at gmail.com. That's W R I T E at gmail.com. Um, we will take prose. We will take lyrics. We will take small um, pieces, anything that you feel is something that is going to work for you uh, as an artist. So again, you don't have to be published. We're open to just about anything. Yes. And keep in mind, um, we air every other Wednesday, 7, 730, uh, write dot on air at is where you can submit. And uh, we are pretty open to, like you said, anything. We're also even open to people coming on the show. So if you're interested, you could be the first one to come on here. I've, given the opportunity many times to people um but usually our pieces are submitted from people who are farther away from campus and they can't quite make it in um this is not on campus obviously but uh usually the submissions are are more or less students for the most part um but anyone could submit for this yeah and if you're curious to know how you can come and join us here in the studio please email us with any questions you have yes Um, we can sometimes work around schedules now that summer is coming up um it's surprising to be honest with you how we can get this done yes um and we'd love again you know say you've got a song with some lyrics you want to play um we'd like to get really creative with you here um so please join us here at right on air yep you guys make the show so please do tune in have a good night everyone good night